Again, in today's gospel, reiterates to his apostles that their primary mission is to go forth and to teach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and particularly to work those signs and wonders that will also help the minds and hearts of people to understand and to know that in Christ God truly has visited them, and he has come not to condemn the sinners, but to cure them, and so Ultimately, the greatest aspect of the apostolic mission is that they are, go for, they are to go forth and to forgive sins. And our Lord, in telling the apostles, tells us all, we are not to count the course, nor to, are to we to worry, worry about those things necessary to carry out the mission of the church. For if we do our part, the Lord will provide all that is necessary to bring his word to every people, to every nation, and to every land. And as our Lord tells us in today's gospel, and St. Paul also reminds us, we are to preach that same truth in season and out of season, not worrying ultimately about whether it is received or rejected because it is up to the individual soul to respond to the grace of God. But we are merely to go forth and to preach that gospel, praying for all that they truly receive the Lord. And if they reject it through no fault of our own, then it is they, our Lord tells us at the end of today's gospel, who must answer for the rejection of that mission of mercy. And so let us strive always and everywhere to remind ourselves, especially in this day and age in which the church seems to be wrought uh, and assaulted with so many scandals, let us always remind ourselves that her mission is the same mission she has received from the Lord. And the weakness and sins of those, me those members of the mystical body have do nothing to diminish the message that the church has to give the world. For we are all weak and we are all sinners. Indeed, one of the doctrines the apostles would go forth and to teach the world is that the church is the refuge of sinners. And when our Lord said, woe to those who scandalize the members of the mystical body, he also says, and woe to those who are easily scandalized. And so we must always remember the church in light of the truth that is revealed to us by the apostolic teaching. She is a supernatural reality made up by many sinners. And so scandal is to be expected. And so we must pray. We must pray for those who in any way, manner, shape, or form bring scandal upon the mystical body of Christ, always willing to do whatever is necessary to offer reparation and whatever is necessary in order that they may return to the mystical body of Christ. And we are also to go out and give that truth to every land and to every nation and to every people. And so let us always remind ourselves of the great dignity that we have received in being claimed as members of the mystical body of Christ. And let us try to preserve that grace we have received by always striving to witness to that truth, by always striving to bring to the world the knowledge of Christ's love and his forgiveness of our sins so that we may, to, that we may always be found cooperating with the missions of the apostles, that we may always be found drawing souls to the Holy Father and to all bishops throughout the world who are united with him so that they may constantly feed them with the truth of the gospel, feed them with the love of Christ through the sacramental operations of the church so that all peoples and all lands may truly come to know the great mission and the great message that the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church alone has to give, that is, the kingdom of God is truly at hand and Christ has come not to condemn us in this life to, but to forgive us so that we may truly enjoy his presence for all eternity in the life to come.
Amen. Mm-hmm.